Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to continue our exploration of MATLAB programming by introducing how to implement the gradient descent method in multiple dimensions um, using both the analytical approach and also the numerical approach for gradient descent. So the first thing that we need to do is introduce a function that we seek to find, say, the maximum or the minimum of. In particular, we want this to be in minimization form because you should know that the gradient descent method does approach or converge, if it does converge, to a minimum value, provided that your initial guess is in some neighborhood of that minimum value. So the function that I want to play around with is going to be the function f is equal to, and it's going to be a function of two variables, x and y, and the function is going to be sine xy plus sine y times x squared uh, minus, say, cosine x times y squared. All right, um, and we can also introduce, say, a Gaussian term, say, uh, 30e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay, now it's very important to note that MATLAB, again, does not know anything about just, uh, juxtaposition, multiplication, and also these variables x and y are going to be eventually vectors because we're going to be plotting across a two-dimensional uh, mesh grid domain. So every time you have multiplication, exponents, and also division, which we don't have here, but it still applies, you need to use dot operations. So for example, x, y should be x dot star y. Um, and then if we go over here to, for example, exponents, that should be dot exponents. That should be dot exponent as well. Um, also, e to the power doesn't exist in MATLAB. You can do, for example, exp, and that will take care of it. Again, everywhere you see dot exponents, make sure that's dot exponentiation. Juxtaposition doesn't exist. Let's put a times there. This is, again, exponentiation. Put a dot there. This is multiplication, that should be a dot star there. And this is multiplication also, that also should be dot star. So once you have all of your operations and then you give that a run, it should not give you any errors once you run them. All right, so that is the function that we're gonna be seeking to minimize. Now what I want you to do is take a moment, maybe pause this video and find the partial derivative with respect to x of this function f and input that function here. And also take the partial derivative with respect to y and input that function here. And then once we get that done, then we can start coding the gradient descent method. Once you have your partial derivatives with respect to x and also with respect to y inputted in MATLAB as predefined functions, then we need to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. So one of the quick ways that we can test this um, without using vectors is just to evaluate each of these functions at a point, just to make sure MATLAB can evaluate them at, say, a numerical point. So for example, we can do f of 1, 2, fx of 1, 2, and fy of 1, 2, and then run that, and it should give you some values, say, negative 0.5, 4.7, and um, negative 2.18 or something like that. All right, so once everything is working well, now we can start to code the gradient descent method. So the first thing that we need to do is construct our two-dimensional domain. So we're going to plot along the x domain, say from minus 10 to 10, and spacings of size 0.1, and we're gonna do the same thing for the y direction. So negative 10 to 10, and spacings of size 0.1, and then we can take the cross product of these two vectors by using the mesh grid command. So mesh grid of x and y, and that's gonna create our two-dimensional um, uh, 20 by 20 grid with spacings of size 0.1. So the next thing I want to do is great, uh, graph the surface just to see what's sort of going on here. Um, so I'm going to open a new figure, in particular with index 1, and then I'm going to surf x, y, and then z, which is going to be f of x, y, and that's going to graph it. And I'm going to title this, say, 3D surface. So once I give that a go, it should work as long as the vectorized uh, exponents are working. And that's going to be my 3D surface, so it's, you know, quite interesting looking. And there's our little Gaussian... Um, dip pretty much hiding in the middle, um, which we introduced at this very last term. So everything is working appropriately. Um, let's go ahead and also sketch the contour plot because this is actually going to help for mapping out our gradient descent method. So figure number two. So let's do a contour plot of x, y, and z, which is going to be f of x, y. 
And let's input, say, 50 levels onto that contour plot and then title it appropriately. So contour plot of our surface. All right. Um, and let's see what that sort of looks like. So this is going to be our contour plot. So notice we have a couple minimums there, minimum there, minimum there, local minimum there, but this minimum is not as deep as that. And in case you want to sort of have some color schemes, we can always, for example, put a color bar onto this plot so we can sort of see the elevations, the Z elevations for each of these contours. Um, so notice here that we have a maximum elevation of uh, say a little bit more than 150, which is probably located at these peaks here in the top left and here in the top right, with our lower minimum somewhere around say minus 120, most likely located around here and here in the lower bottom corners. All right, so now we have our surface. Now our goal is to code the gradient descent method. So keep in mind the gradient descent method is given by xk plus 1 is equal to xk minus h times the gradient of f evaluated at xk, right? Now some people will use an adaptive gradient descent method and actually have this h change on each iteration, but we're just going to be using a fixed step gradient descent method just for simplicity of coding. So the first thing that we need to do is define our initial guess. So our initial guess which is usually abbreviated by x0. Keep in mind we're in two dimensions, so our initial guess uh, needs to be a vector. So x0 is going to be equal to, let's suppose we want to start at, say, the point 1, comma 1, or 1 semicolon 1, since it's uh, on each row that's going to be the value, and, on, um, and different rows correspond in different dimensions. So uh, x on row 1, y on row 2, and since we're looking at rows, that's going to be separated by a semicolon. Let's do our h step of 0 0.01. You can also make that smaller if you want, but definitely do not make that too big. And then for our update equation, we're going to be starting x old to be equal to x zero, and then x new is going to be equal to our x old minus h gradient x old. So that's pretty much how we're going to be coding this. So for our k is equal to one to let's say 50. So that 50 is going to be the number of iterations we're going to be implementing the gradient descent method uh, for. So x new is going to be equal to x old minus h times, and now we're going to be evaluating the gradient. So keep in mind, x new is a vector, x old is a vector, h is a scalar, and then we're going to be multiplying by a vector. So this vector is going to have two components. The first component is going to be the partial derivative with respect to x, um, evaluated at the x location, which is going to be x old, first row, first column. Um, and then the next component, which is going to be the x old, second row, first column. Okay, so that is going to be the gradient x version. And then once we semicolon that, so we're now on the second row, so the y component. So that's going to be x old 1, 1, and then x old 2, 1. Okay, and this should be the partial derivative with respect to y. All right, so this is the partial derivative with respect to x at x comma y, and then the partial derivative with respect to y of x comma y, right? So the gradient is first partial derivative with respect to x, second component is partial partial derivative, uh, first partial derivative with respect to y, x, y, x, y. So that's the one, one, two, one, and one, one, two, one, respectively. And that should be the x old point, not the new point. That's what we're finding. All right, so that is our gradient descent iteration. And what we want to do is probably plot some lines to sort of connect this on our contour plot. And before I get into it, um, let's just go up here and put the hold on command so our contour plot doesn't delete when we start plotting lines on top of our contour plot. If it doesn't really make sense of what the hold on command does, try leaving it out and you'll quickly see what happens when you actually do not put hold on there. Okay, so now that we know our x new, that means currently we still have our x old vector and also our x new vector um, at the same time. So we can sort of connect the old point and the new point with a line. So x1 old new is going to correspond to the x coordinates of both the old and the new point. So x old 1 1 corresponds to the x location of the old point, and then x um, new 1 1 will be the x-coordinate of the new point. And then we can, for example, do x2 old new, and this is gonna be the y value of the old, so x old 2 1, and then the y value of the new. So 
x new to one. All right, and then we can connect these two things with lines. So for example, line of x1 old new and then x2 old new. The reason I do x1 and x2 instead of x and y is because you can have three dimensions, four dimensions, five dimensions, um, which is more easier to say, say x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, instead of x, y, z, w, t, because you're going to probably run out of letters eventually if you're working with high dimensional data. Right? Um, by default, this will plot in blue, so I'm just going to plot it in black just to be consistent. So color and then the vector for black would be 0, 0, and 0. And let's make the line width. Um, something bigger than one, it defaults at one, let's go up to two, right? And if you do draw now, that'll draw it as it calculates it. Um, and that's pretty much the gradient descent method. And let's also update, so x old is gonna be equal to x new, right? So that is gonna be the gradient descent method. So let's just give this a run and see what happens here. So it's going to start off uh, by graphing a, um, contour plot, and then it draw, graphs this little curve. It started up here, and then it went straight down to the minimum, right? Which is what the gradient descent method is converging to, okay? Um, so let's assume that we don't start here, for example, the point one, one. Let's assume that we started the point, for example, two, two. It might not be as obvious where we're going to go, but our gradient descent method will tell us where we will go. So let's just change that initial condition, sort of follow that curve. So notice that two, two sort of starts here, and it sort of goes along those particular directions and starts to go into this little valley in this top um, middle corner. Um, so if we continue the iterations, it's probably gonna go up to um, say zero comma positive infinity, and we can actually increase the iterations to sort of see that um, and where it goes. So if we sort of go all the way up um, for 100 iterations, um, as anticipated, it's going to go all the way up to positive infinity. Notice that it will go beyond the graphing domain because I only graph from minus 10 to 10 in both x and y directions, um, but it will still plot those values even if it does go beyond our contour plot. Of course, you can graph this, and if it goes beyond that contour plot, you can always increase your dimensions for your grid um, from, say, like minus 15 and 15 or minus 15 to 15 for both x and y directions if you want to, but that's up to you. It depends on the preference and sort of what you want to graph in this particular um, contour plot. Now, although this implementation of the gradient descent method is actually pretty good, um, it does have one major programmatic downside, and that is this. What if we want to graph a different function f um, in higher dimensions? We would have to find the partial derivatives with respect to x and y, and then plot them here. That's of course extremely tedious and we probably don't want that. So what we can do is we can actually do central difference approximations to fx and fy, um, which only require us to know f, and a step size for x and y, say delta x and delta y. So let's see if we can go ahead and make that um, very strong improvement um, to this implementation. So let dx also be equal to say 0.01. We can let dy also be equal to 0.01. Notice I'm not gonna use h, which is common for the definition of a derivative because we're already using h here um, for time step uh, delta t, right? Of course you can make delta t, delta x, and delta y all be equal to the same number 0.01, but this gives you a little bit of flexibility from the programmatic perspective, just in case you do want to change them and sort of see the consequences of that numerical um, approximation. So we're not going to be using um, this partial derivative with respect to x, so let's just comment those out. Um, and let's now define our central difference approximations to fx. Again, this is still a function of x and y. Um, so there's a leading coefficient of the central differences. Remember, that's going to be 1 divided by 2 times delta x. And then it's going to be f of x plus delta x comma y minus f of x minus delta x comma y. So that's the central difference approximation um, to the first order partial derivative with respect to x. And similar for y, again, that's a function of both x and y, and that's gonna be one divided by two times delta y times f of x comma y plus delta y minus f of x and then y minus delta y. And that's going to be our first order approximation or second order approximation via the central difference approximation for the partial derivative with respect to y. 
keep in mind, I've already called our partial derivatives and our gradients, fx and fy, so I don't need to change anything here, um, and everything should work appropriately. So notice that if I give this a run, it's still going to graph the same exact solution, although it may look subtly different. As I make these delta x's and delta y's closer to zero, it will actually get closer and closer to the solution that I did for the exact analytical representations of x, fx and fy. Now, the main plus to this method is that now I can change this function to anything I want. For example, I can delete that term completely um, and not have to find these fx and fy terms and still approximate with these with central difference approximations. And if you want, you can um, make those delta x's and delta y's even closer to zero just in case you feel like these central difference approximations are contributing a lot of error to your simulation. So if I give this a go, that's going to give me, of course, a different surface. Um, and then it's going to graph the solution um, to the gradient descent method algorithm. And that's going to converge to wherever it's trying to converge to. So that is how we plot or um, code the gradient descent method in MATLAB. Of course, we have only variables x and y. You can, of course, do x1, x2, x3, and x4. Um, the central difference approximations would practically be the same, and practically the only um, piece that you need to change um, would be this line. Now, the only downside with higher dimensional gradient descent methods is the contour plots, um, because graphing higher dimensional surfaces, especially in 4D or 5D, is extremely tedious because our computers, at least in the current day, are mainly optimized to plot 2D and, in some occasions, 3D. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.